AI Kenya podcast presented by Microsoft. Welcome to Spotlight AI Kenya series. I'm your host Alfred Ongera. The purpose of this podcast is to help our wider audience understand artificial intelligence and its benefits. In today's episode, we host Michael Cook, a senior manager at the Center for Future Work at Cognizant. Well, welcome, Michael. Great, thanks, Alfred. Great to be here. Yeah. So, um, I think you you could start by introducing yourself and what you do. Yeah, for sure. As you said, I'm senior manager at Cognizant Center for the Future of Work, and we have a remit to look forward and look ahead of the business. So, tell us more about uh, Cognizant and the Future of Work. What you guys do mainly? Absolutely. So, Cognizant is one of the world's largest IT service providers. Mm-hmm. So, we have around 270,000 people working for us across the globe. and we operate mainly within north america regions but we're really making a big push in africa right now and within the center we have a mandate and that mandate is to look 5 to 10 years ahead of the business and to research the technology process and industry trends that are shaping the future of work and we're mm-hmm. looking at core technologies right now such as ai blockchain iot etc that are really impacting the workforce and the way value is derived within companies Could you touch on why you are in the country right now? Why is Cognizant in Kenya at this particular moment? Absolutely. So we're we're actually making a big push. And this week we've been here. We've been speaking to schools. We've been talking to accelerator programs. We've been talking to business professionals, but also partners. Uh, and we're really launching Cognizant in Kenya. That's our, our big mission right now. Mm-hmm. So what we're looking to do is, of course, build business here with local companies. We're also looking to build partnerships as well uh, with like-minded organizations, like. minded schools and also accelerator programs as well we see innovation as a core component of industries right now mm. and that's really going to help drive value moving forward so i think that's something we're really looking to do as well while we're here so you recently had a publication called 21 jobs of the future Uh, could you tell us more about that? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I think before we get into 21 jobs, let's give you some more context on why we actually wrote the paper. Mm-hmm. So, it started in 2016 when we were looking at some studies that were coming out around the future of jobs in the face of artificial intelligence. And there was a terrifying study that got put out that said that 47% of jobs could be lost due to artificial intelligence over the next 25 years. It's a really big number. It is. It's a yeah. huge figure. It's a terrifying figure. So we went away and we did our own study. And off this study, we actually wrote a book and we called it What to Do When Machines Do Everything. Mm-hmm. But the study was quite extensive. We interviewed 2,000 business leaders uh, from some of the world's top companies. We interviewed 1,000 middle managers as well, mm-hmm. 500 MBA students. And then we spoke to scores and scores of futurists, job market experts and industry experts. And we put together a data set. And the way we see the job market playing out is very very different to 47% of job loss I'm pleased to say so we did It's see good news s- yeah exactly yeah. so we did see some job displacement though uh, we saw 12% of job displacement mm-hmm. which is very significant you know it's about 1.5 million workers in the Kenyan economy And it's around 11.9 million in the US economy. So it's around that. So skin, very, very significant. We can't get away from that. But we also see that 75% of the jobs that we do today are going to be enhanced through the use of this technology. So jobs are going to become more enjoyable um, and workers will be able to focus on work that matters. So those horrible, rote, repetitive data entry tasks that we do in our daily jobs, well, that's going to disappear. we can focus on creation innovation and collaboration not only will jobs be enhanced but new jobs will be created so we see 13% of jobs being created off the back of this new technology so new technologies normally lead to new industries and new jobs of course so if we saw if we take the invention of electricity for example it's a great example of one technology mm-hmm. that led to vast new industries so electricity gave us television the transistor the movie industry radio yeah so huge industries were born of that one technology so that's the way we see ai impacting jobs but off the back of that we wrote a report called 21 jobs of the future yes. so what are some of these new jobs going to be mm-hmm. and there's 21 of them so i'm not going to get into that right now but your listeners can very easily download the report free mm-hmm. online 21 mm-hmm. jobs of the future by cognizant yeah and have a look at the specific jobs but they fall into three unique categories coaching caring and connecting so when you talk about coaching mm-hmm. We see this new world we're entering into this new digital ecosystem giving us value through digital means. So let's look at something like blockchain technology which spawned uh, cryptocurrencies. Cryptocurrencies are purely digital. Yeah. Plus data is now becoming sovereign. 
Mm. So, you know, regulation in Europe right now has led to the our individual data having a value now. We as individuals can almost sell that data. And it's, it's great saying this type of thing, but ultimately, how are you going to deliver on this value in real terms? Well, we see people need to be coached. And that's yeah. why coaching, that's one example, but coaching has huge ramifications throughout the digital world. Mm-hmm. That's one of the reasons we need coaching. And then secondly is caring. Caring has been a huge part of our society for millennia, but we see it increasing in prevalence, especially in the face of new technologies. So the one job that we focus on when we talk about uh, caring mm-hmm. is AI-assisted healthcare technicians. And we came up with this job in, at the end of last year. We're actually now seeing it play out in reality. So AI-assisted healthcare technici- technicians are trained nurses working in conjunction with artificial intelligence diagnostics tools. And these people, these professionals, can be deployed at numbers, mm-hmm. but also at cost efficiencies that traditional doctors simply couldn't. And in a Kenyan or just a wider African and emerging economies market or context, access to affordable medical care is critical. It's a critical issue right now. Uh, and then lastly, connecting. We spoke about 75% of jobs being enhanced. Yeah. That's great. But how do you actually make that happen on the ground? Mm-hmm. Ultimately, you're going to need people that can help connect man and machine, create these new value streams. Okay. And you mentioned there's a lot of uh, misinformation of what AI is. Mm. So how does Cognizant define AI? It's a very good question. You know, we've been automating technology. We've been automating IT work for an awfully long time. Mm-hmm. Think about ATMs. Uh, think about your home security system, your home uh, alarm, or think about a self-check-in booth at a local airport. This is all automation, absolutely, but it's not AI. Yeah. You know, so absolutely not. And AI is actually quite new, really. The, the concept, of course, is not new, but it's coming to fruition and actually really being implemented. That is new. So many people think that some historical examples were the first, you know, instance of AI coming to fruition and and people point back to Gary Kasparov, the world grandmaster in chess being beaten by IBM, the system made by IBM. Exactly, deep Uh, blue. And no, that that wasn't AI. That was literally algorithmic brute force. But when we saw Google's team at DeepMind develop their AlphaGo system that beat Lee Sedell four games to one in a game of Go, that was true AI coming to fruition right now. But that's almost at the bleeding edge. You know, those types of systems use neural networks, and that's right at the leading edge of where this technology is going. And of course, that's accelerating at a very fast rate. But within the business context, we're really seeing machine learning right now coming to fruition. And we're Mm -hmm. seeing that accelerate across industries right now. We're seeing it within finance, the legal sector, but also healthcare is really changing the way people are working. Uh, and then it's enhancing workers within their roles right now. Now, bringing it to a local context, um, Mm -hmm. in the East African or in the Kenyan region, um, do you see any penetration of AI as a solution or as a service by companies? Oh, absolutely. I've been amazed, actually. We've only been here five days, but the number of companies and the number of startups and the number of accelerators we've seen mm-hmm. around AI, but also other technologies in Kenya, has been astounding. Yeah. So just some companies that I've seen or come across since my time here is mm-hmm. WESA, uh, I think it's called, who do credit scoring, mm-hmm. AI-assisted credit scoring, Kaya Metrica, who are involved in healthcare, uh, Utu as well. Uh, and then we've seen accelerator programs such as BotLab as well, a fantastic organization, a fantastic Fantastic Accelerator Program is really driving AI within the Kenyan region. And of course, yourself, yeah. you're speaking about this. You know, you're out there spreading yeah, the word. Yeah. But then we've also seen a company I came across yesterday, which is really interesting, is Temper. And they're a recruitment agency. They were started by a, a Dutch guy mm-hmm. called Sebastian Tan. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, but he's based in Kenya. He runs his operation in Kenya. And basically what it's doing is matching workers, temp, uh, temp workers to uh, jobs using AI technology. Oh, Fascinating. It's really, really driving value-added recruitment work within Kenya. So, fantastic stuff's happening. But then if we look at Africa as a wider context, mm-hmm. we're seeing some really interesting startups as well. So, mm-hmm. Data Profit uh, is one, based mm-hmm. in South Africa. They focus on BFSI technology. We've seen Clever, who's doing automated sales work through the use of AI. Yeah. Uh, Aerobotics, or uh, Aerobotics, who do AI systems in drones. Mm-hmm. And then also... Still in South Africa? All in South Africa these yeah. years. <laughs> so you must understand, I'm slightly biased as well. I can't even come from South Africa. But uh, we're seeing great innovation happen across the continent right now. But I think yeah. the hot spots really have, at least in my mind, are Kenya and South Africa right now. Now, bringing it back to Cognizant, um, sure. while you're in the country, are you trying to sort of... Uh, 
push AI forward or is it just technology in general? It's technology in general, but mm-hmm. of course AI has a component of that. You know, okay. we've seen, we're really trying to evaluate where people are at, where our clients are at, and how we can best use technology to help move them up the value chain. Okay. Whether that means AI, great, but whether it means simple cloud migration, whether it means data gathering and capture, it's really where these clients are on their maturity scale. Mm-hmm. Then a very hot topic right now is regulation in AI, uh-huh. where we have uh, top minds like Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk going against each other. So yeah. could you share your thoughts on uh, regulation? It's a really hot topic right now. And as you said, there have been some very prominent figures that have given their opinion on where they see the technology playing out and how they see it playing out. And unfortunately, it's really given the public quite a lot of fear about the impact of this technology in the yeah. coming years. But there are con- countries uh, and parliaments and governments that are really getting to grips with this technology right now and are starting to enact regulation and ethics around AI. Some of the leaders in this space right now are the UK and also Mm -hmm. Canada. So I live in the UK right now and I was at a conference recently and one of the lords from our House of Lords, we still have a House of Lords in the UK, (laughs) um, was speaking at this, uh, this conference. And he heads up the UK Committee on Artificial Intelligence. Mm-hmm. The fact that we have a committee focused on this is fantastic. But they're really getting to grips with some of the regulation around the technology and also the ethics that are involved in the, te- the technology. Yeah. And they've come up with a five-point ethical system or plan that mm-hmm. they want to hardwire into AI AI bots moving forward. The first ethic, uh, ethical implication that they want to enable is artificial intelligence should be developed for the common good and benefit to humanity. Second, AI should operate on principles of intelligibility and fairness. Third, AI should not be used to diminish the data rights or privacy of individuals, mm-hmm. families or communities. Fourth, all citizens should have the right to be educated to enable them to flourish mentally, emotionally and econ- economically alongside AI. And the autonomous power to hurt, destroy, or deceive human beings should never be vested in AI. In a machine. Exactly. And I think if these types of ethics are hardwired into systems of intelligence and are used globally and adopted globally, Mm -hmm. it'll really diminish the fear that people have in this tech right now. And it'll really really allow the technology to actually flourish. Public perception is of vital importance. And we need to realize that people are very uncertain about what AI means for humanity. And I think these types of goals are fantastic. Or these types of ethics are fantastic at really addressing that. I think we were talking previously and you gave me some very interesting examples of how AI is coming into um, board board meetings to make decisions. Ah. Could you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. This is fascinating. So up until now, we've spoken about AI and its impact on basic jobs, you know, us, you know, the same types of jobs we have, but it's even impacting leadership as well. And yeah. it's changing the way leadership happens. So a great example of this is Deep Knowledge Ventures. Mm-hmm. They're a Hong Kong based venture capitalist firm and they focus on uh, big data companies, healthcare companies and some others. And they have a board, you know, just like any other company would have. Uh, they previously had four members on the board, but they found they were getting stuck in the decision making process because of an even number on their board and it was causing issues. So what they did is introduced a vital to their board a fifth member called Vital, and this Mm. is a system of intelligence, a machine learning algorithm that has equal voting rights on the board. So now it's not just workers that have been automated away, it's almost leaders (laughs) that have been enhanced, but also automated away in a certain regard by this technology. That's quite interesting. So I'm just thinking what happens when you take a system like Vital and you put it in the cloud and accessible across all the the whole world it's a very good question yeah Yeah, and looking forward to seeing that playing out (laughs) well thank you michael for um, joining us for this particular episode um last remarks do you have any final words on maybe how people can get in touch with cognizant or yourself absolutely on linkedin so please feel free to connect with me at mike cook uh, at cognizant and you'll find me otherwise on twitter my uh, hashtag or my handle i think it's called is mike mark c so feel free to follow me there. Uh, but otherwise, you know, we've had a fantastic time here. It's my first time visiting Kenya. And mm-hmm. what I've been amazed by and really encouraged by is the appetite for innovation and the appetite for entrepreneurship locally. Yeah. Of course, AI is a huge component of that. But within the wider technology sphere, uh, mm-hmm. there's really interesting innovation happening around blockchain, AI, huge amounts of other technologies as well, including IoT. So it's been very encouraging. Uh, and I think we, we as a company are also really looking forward to doing further business in the country. Well, thank you, Mike, for joining us today. Thanks very much, Alfred. It's been great. All right, listeners, uh, that's all we have for you for this particular episode. 
we look forward to you joining us in the next one see you the ai kenya podcast presented by microsoft